Right off the bat, we want to let you know that this week's video is not going to be our typical RV adventure, nor is it going to be RV tips and tricks. This is a part of our American history, and especially after visiting this site, we wanted to share it with you. Hi, my name is Dan. Hi, I'm Dina, and we are Rivers to Ridges RV. We do not want to turn this into a political video. Yeah or an American history yeah. educational video. Right. But we want to get into a little bit of American history just to kind of hopefully get you in the right frame of mind right. of what was going on um, during this time period. The other thing we want to mention right off the bat too is if you happen to see all that garbage oh behind goodness. us, Please ignore, ignore it. <laughs> yeah, That's ignore our next mess. adventure we're getting ready to work on. And I still can't believe Dean has signed up for it. I don't think I signed up for it. I think you dreamt that I agreed to it and now you're telling me that I agreed to it. But I something don't, is enough they're gonna start believing I, I yeah for you say that I agreed and rodeo's going with us and I don't know how she's gonna do I don't know how I'm gonna do and in this abuse in this <laughs> spouse abuse and animal abuse <laughs> it might be we'll find out <laughs> this is gonna be an interesting one <laughs> anyways we want to talk a little bit about the Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument and how we even came to, to go there. Yeah. We were in Cody, Wyoming, and we were driving to Custer, South Dakota. And about halfway in between, we ended up stopping at Sheridan, Wyoming. And honestly, one of the reasons why we stopped there was we wanted to go to the National Monument, the Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. Sheridan, Wyoming. It's about an hour drive south of the monument. So it was just, it was kind of a good place for us to stop. It was right. along the way and close enough to the monument that we could go right. to. Now Sheridan, honestly, we don't know, we didn't know anything about the, right. the, the town. We did find out 8 o'clock p.m. It is closed down. I think it's more like 7 p.m. <laughs> it could be. It was be. crazy. But at least 8.05 p.m. That town is wrapped up and in bed. You do it not see a soul out. <laughs> but it was a very clean little yeah. town. Population of about 18,000. Right. They did have some really nice little bike trails and, and jogging oh, yeah. trails as well. I was able to go jogging. Dina was able to ride her bike. Yeah, and, I think and it's called the Bird Trail Park or Bird Trail uh, maybe, or something yeah, like that. It was some, beautiful uh, trail though. Really very, nice. very, very nice. Now, while we were in Sheridan, we stayed at an RV park called Peter D's. And this was actually kind of cool. The RV park yeah. is, there's really no amenities there. There's none. They, of course, they do have a bathroom. Bathroom and showers. Bathroom and showers. And that's really about it on, on the grounds. The but, place is spotless. Yeah, don't let that stop you. Right? No. Um, oh goodness, no. We enjoyed it. our time. The 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 RV the park is kind of sitting in the middle of a big horse pasture. Yeah. Or I should say there's horse pastures surrounding, surrounding the RV park. And cattle. There's cattle and horses. It's in very wide open hilly area. So it's kind right. of a nice it is very, very, nice very relaxing. And, yeah, right? very relaxing. The owners, Peter and his wife Barbara. Bar Barbara. Barbara? They work their Adorable. butts off. I think they're the only two people oh, who actually yeah. work in the campground. We never saw a one other worker, not even for yeah. the restrooms. Um, so I give them credit. Um, Mowing, they, cleaning they, up. They seem to do everything. Running the office, doing the, everything. Yeah, the bathrooms are spotless. They do also have, Barbara has a vegetable garden. Yep. In the middle of the don't go, don't go picking <laughs> yeah. anything out of the garden. Uh, uh, uh. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a big no, no, no. But you can go to their office. Yes. Uh, buy some vegetables there, and we actually purchased some jams, jams that Bar Barbara couple. made as well. And you just finished the I just last today, of the apple this morning, cinnamon. I apple cinnamons. We may have to go back. Um, and the choke, choke. Choke, Choke cherry. cherry was the other one. It was yeah. really, really good. Really too. yummy. I wish so. we'd gotten more. Yeah, those were really, really and good. And you can buy the vegetables. Did you already say? Yeah, you can buy the vegetables the, up yeah. there as well, too. So their office is an old barn yep. that they had moved to this particular location um, probably 20 years or, or more ago. And they've done a little bit of renovations yeah, to the barn to make it, it a, and make it into an office. So now let's get on to the, the little... Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. Yeah. Like we said a little bit earlier, the Little Bighorn National Monument is about an hour north of Sheraton, Wyoming. And if you're not sure what it is, you may, may not have heard it, 
you might be like me, <laughs> history yeah. was a long, long time ago for us, so we forgot a lot of this stuff. We won't say how long ago. <laughs> a couple years. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. A couple years. Yeah, a few. <laughs> but you may have heard of Custer's Last Stand, and it's one and the same. This, yeah. this is where uh, uh, Custer, you know, fought his last battle, basically. So at an extremely high level, what was going on was in 1868, a treaty was signed with the Plains Indians um, at Fort Laramie. And basically what the treaty said was the Indians can have all this land around the Black Hills of now South Dakota and all this all the surrounding area right. as well. It was supposed to be really, really good hunting grounds. From what right. we're told in the treaty, it actually said this land is yours as long as the buffalo roam right. the, the the plains right. or the fields. So basically, it's the Indians' lands forever. This was 1868. Now, just a short five years later, all that came to a screeching halt. Yeah. What happened was there was an expedition going out west. I don't remember exactly the purpose of the expedition. I, I believe it's just fact finding type right. stuff. Right. Right. But there was some prospectors in there as well, and they ended up finding gold in about 1874, I believe. So now they found gold in that same Black Hills area. So lo and behold, it didn't take very long for the word to get back. Yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of white people, uh, coming from the east, heading, heading west, west. Wanting, wanting to get rich yeah. quick. Now the big problem with this is this gold area is on the Indians land that was promised to them. So as you can imagine there's a lot of fighting going back and forth. The the miners or the prospectors they wanted their gold so they would protect yeah. it. You know they would get attacked by Indians, right. they would fight and back and forth. The Indians, this was their land promised to them. Right. They didn't want the prospectors there and, right. and getting taken over. So they were fighting for their land. So a lot of a lot of stuff going on yeah. back and forth and this happened for a little while and finally the US government said we got to put a while. stop to this we got to just make the Indians put them on a reservation or you know there's really no polite way to say this get rid of them yeah. that's basically what was happening at the time and this is when in 1876 June of 1876 uh, General Custer and this actually brings up something yes. we just learned yes, as a matter learned. of fact you may have heard of General Custer, and you may have heard of Colonel oh. Custer. You're right. Both of those are right. <laughs> yep. Custer was a general, actually a temporary general in the Civil War. He fought during the Civil War. Once the war was over, he lost that temporary rank as general, and he went back to a colonel. So you may hear Colonel Custer, and you may hear General Custer, but at the time of the battle, he was a colonel. Right. The U.S. government sent the 7th Cavalry and some, and some other military as well out to round up the Indians, force them to fight, whatever it took. They were either going to, I, hate, I don't want to say it this way, but yeah. get rid of them or force them onto a reservation. Right. And that's what was going on. Now the actual battle itself took place June 25th and June 26th. And honestly, uh, General Custer and 267 of his men died. It was approximately 60 to 70 Indians that died right. in the battle as well. Now on the Indian side, there, that's a rough estimate. It was uh, from what we read, what we were told, uh, right after the battle, a lot of the Indians were either buried or moved um, for their ceremonies and, and, right. and burial right. somewhere else. So there's else. no record with there's the official no number. There's no written record. Well, something else I thought was really interesting. I never heard this from anybody. Yeah. During the battle, Custer actually lost four of his relatives in the same battle. So you had Custer, you know, died. His brother, nephew, and two other relatives. I don't, I don't know the relationship. They all died in the same battle. Yeah. And this was something we actually saw when we went to the the Last Stand Hill. Uh, we saw where Custer's uh, gravestone is, and there's another gravestone fairly close to right. it with another, I forget the guy's first name, his last name was Custer. At the time, yeah, we just kind of thought it was coincidence, yeah. but apparently it was one of his relatives. Yeah. So when you get to the National Monument, you go through the main entrance, and roughly yeah. 200, maybe 300 yards down is a visitor, visitor center. center. And it's mainly pretty much parking lot between right. the main entrance and the visitor center. If you do have dogs or pets, 
this is honestly the only place they're yep. allowed to get out of a vehicle and right. they still have to be on a leash. Yep. But if you need to walk them or let them go to the bathroom, right. there's a place on the side of the road where they right. can go. Once you get past the visitor center, yeah. dogs are not allowed or pets are not vehicles. allowed out of the vehicles. At all. Understandably so. Under, yeah. You're it's mm -hmm. it's a place you should visit with respect. Right, definitely. And I'm sure they don't want dog people or dogs running around right. going to the bathroom everywhere. Right. So it's it's uh we get it. Yeah. The visitor center itself is pretty, it's kind of small. There is a very small museum in there. You could probably do the whole museum in a, in a half an hour, 45 minutes if you've read everything. But they do have some pretty neat artifacts as well. Now the thing that we did, and I'm really glad we did it yeah. this way, we went to a, at the back side of the visitor center, we went to a ranger talk. Yep. It was about a half hour talk. And it was really good because the ranger explained kind of what I just did at an extremely high level, right. and I'm sure I butchered it too. But he explained very well the history, what was going on at the, at the time of you know 1867. Everything that was going on. He right. knew the history of Custer, the Indians, the type of Indians, just everything. Very, very interesting. So when you go to the ranger talk, you kind of get a really good feeling right. of what was going yeah, on. A better and understanding. The and politics and, and just yeah. everything that was going on that, at that time. And then when you go take the drive through the actual battlefield, mm -hmm. a lot of it makes more well, sense. Right. What was the day of the battle? What was hundreds of years before the battle? Crow Indian land. The Crow looked this is all their land. Uh, they didn't want the Sioux and the Cheyenne here. They wanted them out of here. Out of the West, Bozeman, Montana. Colonel John Gibbon, 500 Infantry. Out of the East, Bismarck, North Dakota, Fort Abraham Lincoln. General Alfred H. Terry with a thousand soldiers, including all 12 companies of the U.S. 7th Cavalry under the command of Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer. So you see, Custer actually was only one of 2,500 soldiers all out here trying to do the same thing. The drive itself is about a four and a half mile drive. Right. And there's a lot of little stops along the way and we found these extremely interesting. Yes. I I believe there's about 20 kiosks. I believe there's, yeah, you're probably right. 20-ish, 20 20, 21, yeah. 22 kiosks. Now the neat thing kiosks. with the kiosks. Kiosks. Uh, I know what I was talking that about. That have the information on <laughs> yeah. them. But go ahead. But what we really, really yeah. liked about these was they had little um, barcodes or, or scan, scan, scan yeah. codes you could scan. And then you could actually have a, a, a somebody would narrate on, what was phone. going on on yeah. your phone. So you could stand in front of this little kiosk, you're looking out over a piece of the battlefield mm -hmm. and you have somebody narrating As to you, just, uh, you know, right. this is where the Indian encampment was, this is right. where all the warriors came up from the, the little Bighorn River, to your the right timber. is where Custer yeah. was at his um, last stand hill, things like that. And as you move down the drive or right. from kiosk to kiosk, you do the same thing. You scan the next kiosk and it gives you more information about what right. happened at that that piece of the battle. Right. Right. So the whole drive itself is about four and a half miles. Yeah. You do it in your own car at your own pace. Yep. There's a lot of um, grave markers kind of scattered right. throughout the whole four and a half miles. And it really brings this whole thing into perspective yeah. now honestly for us this was a place that I really wanted to see it yeah you wanted to see it for a just while just kind of one of those yeah. things it's like a Mount Rushmore you yeah. want to see it. it's kind of one of those places I wanted yeah. to see so we were happy to be there but at the same time it's very somber right very somber it's and emotional very mixed emotions yes. and people yes. died there yeah. both sides fighting for what they believed in right right so I mean again you're standing or, you know, somebody fought and gave his life for what he right. believed in, both sides. Um, and it's, it's just very emotional. So, yeah. it's again, it's a part of American history. We're so glad we had the opportunity to go there. Well, you was, said that you felt you had the same feeling it, come over you as when we were at the Civil War battlefields. Yes. Yeah, we yeah. were at some of the Civil War years battlefields ago. years ago. And I may have mentioned this in another video, but when you're when you're yeah. when you when you look at a picture in a history book, a, a picture of a Civil War battlefield, yeah. 
when you look at it and now you're actually standing in that same yeah. exact spot it just brings it home yeah i had yeah. that feeling it's differently <laughs> yeah i had that feeling at the civil war battlefields yeah. i had the same feeling here yeah. as well so yep. it's a place to be respected um no matter what you feel about what happened yeah you have to go there and, and just respect now towards it, what we did is we after the ranger talk we did the drive and we mm -hmm. kind of saved the monument itself monuments um, for last because we thought it would make it, it would just kind of be more meaning to it mean, yeah. after you saw what happened yeah so there is a monument uh, where custer and roughly 40 of right. his men um, died it's called the last stand hill there's a monument there i believe there's actually still a lot of the soldiers who are buried beneath the monument there's actually another place that has a lot of the horses yeah. uh, they were all buried there as well so the monument's oh, kind of right. neat i forgot about the, yeah. Yeah, the monument's kind of neat and it stands right on top of the called last stand hill yeah. that's where custer um died and you have a, like roughly 40 grave markers right there too so it's pretty powerful to stand there what got me the most was to stand there and look down where that Indian encampment would have been and just picture myself you know in 1876 I'm, I'm fighting and all I see is this is what this is the last thing these people saw yeah. right these saw yeah. this is the last thing they saw and also for the Indians looking up it, yeah and they're kind That's of surrounded the, yeah. a little bit so it's if it's you think both, of it in, in some of those it's terms right. it's very emotional yeah. it, it's tough and once we did that we went over to the indian memorial right and this was actually i really enjoyed this as well they had some wrought iron um i guess indians on horses right. cut out it was now, very at the very time nice. we didn't know this but they had a lot of i'm gonna call them rags just for scarves scarves prayer, prayer um scarves. tied to some of these uh the wrought iron horses and stuff we didn't know what they were at first but we found out they're prayer flags yep so if you do happen to see a lot of these scarves or um, cloth i yeah. guess hanging um different it, they're yeah. prayer flags don't mess with them yeah, yeah re respect them. them so the indian memorial was pretty neat as well they had a lot of quotes from some famous chiefs yeah. and things like that it's definitely worth uh, going in there as well so you, you kind of get uh the feeling from both sides. Both sides. So, yep. that um, that was our take on the Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument, right? Yeah. It was. Um, I'm really glad that we went. We're glad we went. It was again. I would not have called it an adventure. I feel grateful that yeah. that we got to go. Yeah. It's, not, it's not. It's not a place you're gonna go yeah, and, and and have picnics yeah. and things like that. No. It's it's a graveyard, yeah, honestly. Cemetery. And it's a cemetery. <clears throat> it's a battlefield. So yeah. we're gonna leave you with that. With and all that said. Yeah, with all that said, yeah. we're gonna leave. We put together about a minute and a half video with some music to kind of show you what what we saw and, and some Our of the things that, that we took from it. So yes. hopefully you enjoy that.